Hey, Tom Merrill here, and today we're talking about some basic things a good engine company or a good engine firefighter, or actually anybody who could be expected to be on a hose line during a fire incident should be expected to master. Now, we could fill chapters talking about fire engine operations. It is the cornerstone for a successful outcome at any fire incident. As is often said, put the fire out and a lot of your problems go away. Now, we know there's a lot of subjects to master in our fire service, isn't there? Just look in your apparatus base and you'll see all sorts of equipment and apparatus that we as firefighters should be expected to know a lot about. Now, not all fire departments have a ladder truck. Not all fire departments have a brush truck or a tanker or a tender. But I'm pretty sure within the walls of each fire department across our land is a vehicle designed to put water on the fire. First and foremost, Every department member, from the newest probie to the most senior person, should know what's carried in each and every compartment. At a fire scene, any one of them could be expected to retrieve a piece of needed equipment. And it looks embarrassing, and quite frankly, it's unprofessional to see a firefighter scampering around a ring, opening and closing doors, looking for what's needed at the fire scene. Avoid the dog chasing the tail look by periodically going out in your apparatus bay and opening the compartment doors and refreshing your memory as to what's carried. Next, we all need to understand the nozzles that are carried on our apparatus. Now, most firefighters know the standard pre-connect nozzle that's carried, but what other nozzles are in your firefighting arsenal? And when might they be called into play? But don't just understand the name of the nozzle. Get to know how they really work. Learn about the nozzle. We wouldn't expect a soldier to go into battle without knowing his or her weapon. Well, just the same, our battle is fire, and our weapon of choice is the nozzle on the end of our fire hose. If your nozzle of choice is the automatic nozzle, what is the minimum pressure required to get the GPM that you're looking for? It used to be that 100 PSI was the operating pressure for most automatic nozzles, but newer automatic nozzles are operating at 75 or even 50 PSI. What are your automatic nozzles operating in? Teach your firefighters to truly understand what an automatic nozzle is, how it operates, and when it would be used in a fire situation. If your nozzle of choice is the straight tip nozzle, have a basic understanding of the desired tip pressure that delivers the most effective stream. Unlike the automatic nozzle, understand that if additional lengths of hose are added, the stream may be impacted, as well as the tendency for more kinks to be present because they operate at a lower pressure. Most fire engines are loaded with various appliances that might not be used all that often, but nonetheless, they can play an important role in any fire incident. Get those seldom used appliances out of the compartment, onto the training ground, so you can familiarize yourself with how they operate. Because the time to learn and understand how they operate is not during an actual fire incident. For example, nozzles like this that have stacked tips, they can be a great way to deliver more GPM on the fire ground. But only if your members know how to use them properly. The bigger the tip size, the more GPM you're going to deliver. Remember, you need to have the water available to do that. Oh, and one last helpful hit with that. When you take the tips off, don't just throw them on the ground. Put them in your turnout coat pocket or your turnout pants pocket so you have them to put back on the nozzle later on because they could be easily lost on the fire. Finally, pick a hose packing method and stick with it. Ensure all of your members are trained and proficient in whatever method you choose. Many don't think of hose packing as a drill topic, but it certainly is. Remember the old saying, the fire goes as the first line goes. An easy to remember, well thought out hose packing configuration will certainly help your firefighters quickly and efficiently get that first line into operation. That smooth and quick deployment is the first step to the successful outcome in any fire incident, and that is the hallmark of a great fire department. These are just a few of the very basic things that all good engine firefighters should strive to understand to help them do their job just a little bit more proficiently. Consider covering some of these topics at your next drill. It's imperative that our firefighters understand the fire engines and the equipment carried on them if we expect them to get lines deployed quickly and do their job effectively. Thanks for watching.